Hello and welcome back to the railway. Today we're going to have a look at this group of items. We've got an engineer's coach, model R620. We've got a beautiful black Jinty, model R52. In the other window box there, we've got the crane truck, R127, along with a separately boxed match truck, R17. But firstly, we're going to have a look at the layout. And we've got the dock shunter, model R253, just moving a couple of wagons back into the side of there. And we're going to take advantage of the uncoupling ramp just to leave them there. And then we'll bring them back out through the points to a gentle stop. And we'll switch those. Now the dock shunter, R253, was available from 1957 to 1977, which was available in black and red over the years. Now we're going to switch points. 18 there, and then we're going to bring her back through into the sidings here on the left. Now, as she makes her way into the sidings, the EM2 storms past the station there with a rake of maroon 9 inch coaches. The EM2 was model number R351, and she was available in green named Electra between 1961 and 1965. Now, just making her way across the suspension bridge, those pantographs look terrific on the overhead cable there beautifully down the incline here and we'll have a lovely shot of the pantographs as she comes along the long straight here and under the incline section and around back to the station. Now we're going to bring her back onto the inside line through points number eight there. Look at that. Not a hitch through there. And then we'll bring her to a gentle stop and we'll close points eight and open number 11. And then we'll back her gently into the station with all of those coaches. Just look at that smoothly through. And we'll bring that to a gentle stop. And we'll close number 11 and switch 17. And we'll bring the Jinty out of the engine shed. She's a very smooth runner. Onto the turntable to a gentle stop. And then we'll rotate counterclockwise. Look at that. And then smoothly off through point 17 and 18 onto the inside line. We'll switch those behind her and off round to the station. We're going to bring her almost up to the end of the platform here with a gentle stop and then we're going to switch points 10, the double crossover, and we'll take her back to pick up these wagons. Just a tiny stutter on the diamond crossing there. Now I think we have those. We'll close 10 and then off we go. Now this group of models did make up the crash train set RS30, which was available in 1963 66. Just listen to the sound of that motor in the duty, beautifully and smooth. And I really love that coach in black. Just approaching the gantries here, and we'll bring her to a gentle stop just at the curve in the track, and then we'll have a closer look at her. Just look at all this wonderful riveting around here. Got these lovely steps front and back, this beautiful lining here, possibly quite overscale decal on the side there, and the, the numbers definitely do look squashed into the space. Now if we look carefully through the side of the cab here, through the opening, we can see the motor is occupying most of the space there, so no cab detail in this. I don't think there's any detail to speak of on the buffer beam itself, it's just painted in red, with the metal buffers just pushed straight in. We've got a standard trying decoupling here, We've got the running number moulded into the smug box door, 47606. And again, some lovely detail around here. And I love this handrail moulded along there, up to the tank. And we've got a water filler on the front edge of the tank there. We've got a little riveted plate and some detail going on back towards the cab windows. Looking at the other side of the model, I think the detailing is identical, but we do have the fixing screw on this side. Looking from slightly above here, we can see we've got two brass safety valves and what may be a whistle moulded in plastic there. A little bit of detail on the roof and what may be a hatch there. We can see some detail around the edge of the coal bunker there and a little bit of a coal load. Detailing on the side of the coal bunker extends across the back edge of the model. We have a number of lamp irons, metal buffers pushed into a very plain buffer beam and a standard decoupling. These two items are the chassis pushing through the bodywork which helps hold the model together and we've got two lovely round windows in the back edge of the cab. 
Just a quick look into the coal bunker here. I want you to see that coal load is really quite crude. Very large lumps of coal. Looking from slightly above here, you can see this wonderful detailing across the top of the boiler. Very simple, but very effective. A lovely dome here and a beautiful shaped chimney. Earlier models would have had the screw down the chimney to secure the body to the chassis. Whilst a number of trying models were offered with smoke units from quite early on, I don't think R52 was. I think it was 1965 when it was offered with the Synchro smoke unit as standard. If we just put this to one side, somebody's gone to the bother of fitting the smoke unit separately to this model. If you look through the catalogues, R52, the Jinty, is just listed as one of the models that smoke unit could be fitted to. We'll just put that to one side. And we'll have a quick look at the chassis here. Now she does have solid wheels. We'll just lift her up. So there's no magnahesion, although the chassis could have traction magnets. We can see the gaps in the chassis there where they could be fitted, but there are no steel tires on these wheels. You can see this beautiful X04 motor there. And now we can see the smoke unit and the way it's been disconnected there and just coiled up. We'll just turn that over and have a look at the underside. So here we can see the S printed on the chassis there. That just means a smoke unit could be fitted to this chassis. And now we've got the collection plate and we can see the axles and there's no name or model number on the metalwork on the bottom of this model. Looking at the underside of the chassis here, we've got Triang's name and the model number R52. And here we've got Made in England. I don't know whether you can see, but there is quite some distortion here. And I believe the smoke units heated up the chassis and caused the body to begin to warp. And if we look down here at the underside of the chimney where it meets the moulding, you can see that definitely the effects of heat here. And that's one of the reasons I've disconnected the smoke unit. I don't want to cause any further damage to this model. This is one of Triang's very long running models. It seems to have first appeared around 1953 and gone on into the Hornby Railways period to around 1975. It's undergone a number of changes in that period and there were a number of variants and special editions made. It got Synchro Smoke in 1965 and eventually got Magnahesion in 1966. It seems odd that Triang waited so long to offer this model with Magnahesion as the chassis had provision for the traction magnets from 1961 onwards. It climbs very well, look at that, beautiful climber. Still, these solid wheels do have quite a lot of grip on this old steel track. Now, just approaching the bridge, we'll follow her across here with this group of wagons, and then we'll bring her down the incline. Now, we're probably gonna pick up a little speed as we come down here. Not too much, we hope. Ease off the power a little bit. Just look at that locomotive. You can see why this model lasted so long. This is just one of those models which springs to mind when you think of trying railways. Classic. We'll bring them gently to a stop. The Bolster Wagon, R17, was around for a lot of years, from 1953 to 1974. In this instance, it seems to have said Bolster Wagon and Match Truck for Crane. In 1962, it went something of a, had a redesign before that, it had holes in the deck for the cable drums to stand in and other types of load. So now we've got planking detail and we've got these two posts. So that makes it a match truck for the crane, I think. We've got a running number here of B913011. And we've got 13 tons. This one's got a plastic chassis. We've got pinpoint axles. So we've got the closed axle boxes, we've got spoked wheels, and the couplings are just riveted into the plastic chassis. We can see Triang's name on the bottom here and made in England. And here we've got the crane truck. It is an operating model, so it does have some play value. I'm not quite sure how strong they are. I quite often see these broken in those odds and ends boxes at the model railway shows. So we can wind up the hook. We'll just give that a go there. There we go, that winds up. And then we can lower the jib We've got the control on the other side, it's quite neat. When it comes down, we'll just lower that right down to the lowest position. There we go. I'm not, not sure how much lifting capacity we really have here, but the chassis is really nicely moulded and it's all in metal. And if I just turn that over and have a quick look at the underside, and we can see we've got sleeved wheels on a single axle and the couplings are held in with flathead screws. 
There is some degree of detail on here. It is riveted right the way around. It's quite a nice moulding. So we'll just pop that back down. And I'll just turn it over the other way. We'll just have a quick look there. And we can see the screw there which holds the whole crane assembly together. A nice little thing. So this was available from 1962 to 79. In 1971 it turned into a bright red model, still had the, the, the metal base but the crane assembly at the top here was, was bright red. If we look closer here on the underside of this engineer's coach we've got the model number R333 which is the wrong model number for this coach. This is model number R620, the engineer's coach. So this is just the same moulding used for the GWR cholesterol brake coach. We do have though the roof from the GWR composite coach, although it is moulded in grey plastic. Pat Hammond's book suggests that both roof types were available on this particular model and doesn't give a reason why. We've got engineer department there, and we've got a running number of 20. And if we turn it over, we can see we've got pinpoint axles, so we've got the closed axle boxes. We've got Triang's name and made in England there and the underframe detail seems to be held on with the roof securing the screw. Let's we'll turn it around again. And if we have a look through there, definitely got no seating in there. And we'll just have a swift look at the ends of the model. It's a really nicely detailed coach. We've just got the metal buffers just pushed into the bodywork there. We'll just have a quick look at the other side. There we go. A really lovely model. I think this is prettier than the GWR ones, personally. This terrific model, R620, the engineer's coach, was available in 1963 to 65 and was black in colour. In 1966 and 67, it was offered in olive green with a grey roof. Now, I think that's it for this week. I'm going to leave you with page 6 and 7 of the 1965 catalogue. And if you have a look back again next week, we'll have something else from this early trying railways period. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.